Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about CPU, RAM, motherboard, and power issues that you might encounter on your computer. So if you're working in the IT field, maybe doing some help desk or technical support uh, type of role, or if you're just building your own computer at home and you run into some problems, we're going to give you some tips as to what you could look for to maybe help you diagnose these types of issues. So you probably know, you know, when you're building a computer or working on one, you have your motherboard and you have to have a processor and you have to have RAM in order for it to function. Of course, other things like a hard drive too, and you need to have power that powers everything. But then sometimes you'll find that one or more of these components can go bad or start to give you issues. So this is what we're going to talk about in this video. All right, so let's, let's start with diagnosing motherboard problems. Okay, so first you want to gather information and identify the symptoms. So if you're having problems such as crashes, boot failures, or error messages, uh, that might be a sign. And if when you have these messages, it's always a good idea to look up any code that comes along with it. And if you've made any changes to your software, let's say you flashed your BIOS on your motherboard and now it doesn't work, then that could be a really good indication of what the problem is. And then once again, check for error codes that you could then research. And you might have a case of some physical damage, let's say something overheated uh, and something cracked and maybe a solder joint or a burnt component. And that could definitely cause your motherboard not to work. And then what you could do also is reseat the components. So that's an easy fix. If that's the problem, it's a nice place to start. You know, reseat the CPU, the RAM and the expansions cards like a video card, network card and so on. And if you're having problems booting up before it even gets to the operating system, you might want to go in and clear your CMOS settings by resetting them to the default values. Doing an update to your BIOS or UEFI could fix problems. And like I said before, of course, it could cause a problem. So keep that in mind. And this is something you definitely need to be careful doing. For example, as you're doing an update, you don't want to turn off your computer in the middle of it because that could just make the whole thing uh, not work at all once you try and turn it back on. And then, of course, you could test with minimal hardware. Just remove everything but the essentials. You know, just use the onboard video. Take out RAM except for what you need. Take out any network card or other expansion cards like a sound card. And just try booting it with the bare minimum to see if you get at least, you know, something on the screen telling you that the uh, motherboard is working properly. And then you could put the components back in one by one to try and isolate the problem. And then you could try some dedicated diagnostic tools such as power on self-test or software-based diagnostic utilities. Many motherboard manufacturers will have uh, utilities for their products that you could use to try and diagnose any problems. And then of course, if you can't figure it out, then you need to take it to the next level. So if you're doing this for your work, maybe the uh, next level up support, or if you're doing this at home, then you could take it into your local computer shop and see if they could figure it out for you. All right, so now let's talk about potential CPU or processor problems. So of course you want to check the physical connection, make sure it's seated properly. As you probably know, these processors have a bunch of pins on the other side that have to fit exactly into the socket on the motherboard. So if one of them does not get seated properly or gets bent, then you're going to have some issues. And then of course you want to make sure that the latch that locks the processor down to the motherboard is secure. Make sure you're getting power to your fan. And then also make sure your power supply is up to par for powering whatever you have on your computer. Then of course you could inspect it for physical damage. Like I mentioned before, look for bent pins or burn marks. Let's say it overheated, then that could be a big problem right there. And when you overheat these things too much, then they're pretty much no good anymore. So keep that in mind. Then you could also check on the temperature of your CPU. So you could use various software tools that will go in and read the temperature of what's going on inside your computer and will also do things like monitor fan speed. So if your processor fan is not spinning fast enough, it's going to overheat. Just because it looks like it's spinning doesn't mean it's spinning fast enough. And then once again, run some diagnostic software. And like I mentioned before, some motherboards will come with diagnostic utilities that you could run. And there's also plenty of third party apps you could use as well. And if you're the type of person who is overclocking your CPU to get some more performance, you might want to revert it back and see if that clears things up. And of course, overclocking can lead to instability and overheating problems. And then like I mentioned for the motherboard, you could update your BIOS or UEFI. This may address some compatibility issues with your CPU. 
And if it's a new computer, you want to verify your CPU compatibility. Just because it fits in the socket doesn't mean it's going to work. So you need to make sure your motherboard supports that specific model. Same with the RAM too. And then once again, you could test with known good components. So take out everything that's not essential to have the computer run and see if it'll boot up that way. And there's also some CPU stress tests you could use to check the performance of your CPU to make sure it's still functioning properly. And then there are system errors. You could look for system logs, go into event viewer, any other types of logs you may want to check out to see if you could find any indication of the problem. And then once again, this reset the CMOS, especially if you've made any changes. And then like I mentioned before, check for bent pins test with a different CPU. So if you have another one of the same model or another one that will work with your motherboard, uh, you could put that in. And if your computer boots up and functions properly with this other CPU, then that's a good indication that your other one is no good or having a problem. And then finally, you could reach out to the manufacturer to see if they could help you out in any way, especially if you have any kind of warranty with your processor. All right, now let's talk about RAM problems, random access memory. So some of the symptoms of RAM going bad, random crashes or restarts, blue screen of death. And of course, with the blue screens, you could get an error code that you could look up to maybe uh, help you figure out the problem. And if you're having slow performance, that's another indication that your memory is going bad. So let's say you have, you know, two or four uh, dims in there, and maybe one of them is going bad and not reading properly, then you're going to have reduced memory which in turn means less memory for your applications to use to run. And then data corruption, that's another symptom. Because as you open files, they are open in RAM while you work on them. And then when you save them to the hard drive, then they're saved. But if you're just working on them without saving them and things are getting corrupt, then it could be an indication that the RAM is what's causing the file corruption. All right, so if you want to check for problems, you could look in the event viewer. So if you're having crashes or freezing, for example, make a note of the date and time, and then go into the event viewer and see if you could go to that specific date time, and then see if there's some kind of error along that corresponds to that specific time. Then you could also run a memory diagnostic tool. Actually, Windows has a built-in memory checker tool that you could run. And then there's also MemTest86, which runs off a bootable USB drive but that's a good way to test your memory as well. And then of course the easy way is just to reseat the RAM modules, you know, taking them out and making sure they're seated properly, making sure there's no dust uh, anywhere inside the slots that could cause a problem. Then if you have any extra memory laying around, you could uh, try that or just run with the minimum amount. So let's say you have four DIMMs, just try two at a time to see if that works properly. Then just try and narrow down which one could possibly be bad. And that's the same thing right here that I just mentioned. And of course, updating your BIOS UEFI could help you fix problems. And then of course, check for compatibility issues, but that's only gonna be most likely if you're building a new computer. If you've had the memory in there for a long period of time, it's not going to become incompatible all of a sudden. But if it is a new build, then obviously you wanna to check to make sure it's supported. All right, now let's move on to diagnosing power problems. So you wanna begin by checking the power source. Make sure the power outlet is working by testing it with another device or plugging the computer into a different power outlet altogether. Check your power cables. Make sure they aren't bad. Same with your power strip. You could try swapping these out as well, especially on a PC. PC power cables are pretty standard and they're used for other devices as well, such as printers. So it should be pretty easy to find the one you need. All right, and then power issues can also be caused by a faulty power supply. So if you have the tools like a multimeter to check the power supply to make sure it's giving the correct voltage, you could do that. Or if you have another power supply, you could swap it out just to see if that fixes the problem. And then it could be as simple as a power button issue on your case. Make sure it's not stuck or damaged or make sure your power strip is not turned off. Or if it's a surge protector, make sure the breaker didn't pop on it. And so it just needs to be reset. And then another trick too to check the power button is to short the power pins on the motherboard where the power connection goes for the wires for the button. So what you would do 
is just take off the connector, take a screwdriver, touch the two pins at the same time so it makes a connection, and see if the computer starts. And if it does, that tells you your power button on the computer case itself is faulty. And there are plenty of videos you could find online showing you how to do this. And then, of course, you could reseat your power cables, especially the one on the motherboard, to make sure something didn't come loose. And then, once again, test with minimal hardware, especially if you have a high-end video card. It could be a case of your power supply is not able to handle it. So you could just plug into the onboard uh, video port and take out the video card and see if that solves your problem. And then here's the bypass the power button option like I was just talking about. Then another indicator would be check your LED indicator. So many motherboards will have a little LED light on the motherboard itself showing that there's power. So if everything's turned on and that light is off, then it could be a case of the motherboard not receiving power. And it could also be an indication of a faulty motherboard. And then if you're smelling something burning, then that's definitely a problem. So trying to narrow down where the burning smell is coming from might be a little difficult unless you could see actual signs of uh, burnt components. And if that's the case, you're going to have to find out what caused these components to overheat. Was it something with a faulty power supply? Was it a power surge? That type of thing. And then once again, here's another note here about trying with a different power supply. Or you could actually borrow one from another system that you know is working. And then you could consult your motherboard manual just to make sure you connected everything properly. All right, so as you can see, there is a lot to diagnosing hardware issues. So it's never going to be a case of it's just something simple like an error code that's going to give you the answer you're looking for or something super obvious if your computer doesn't want to start or freezes up. So it's going to take some pretty serious troubleshooting on your part. So that's why we wanted to provide you with some suggestions and ideas for some things you could check out. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.